All right, in this demo, I'm going to be showing you how to render hair. So uh, what I have here is a source picture that I have grabbed. And I also have a very basic drawing. I obviously didn't draw everything out. I just gave some context with um, the contour of the face. I know the screen is chopping off the top of her head. I'm gonna move my pencils here and I'm gonna move some things around so you guys can see. So as, as you can see here from this source picture, I have copied some major angles and shapes down um, just so that I can accurately show you the hair, um, knowing that in order to show you the hair, I'm gonna need to have the contour, like I mentioned, of the cheeks and the jawbone, um, where the hair frames around her face and the neck down into the shoulder area. So this will be sufficient for my demo. Uh, certainly by this point, you will have had everything transferred with your actual drawing. Um, but even so, just to show you um, some things I was able to achieve, even with some of these areas, um, with the eyebrow and the eye going on there, remember that eyes are not, uh, they're not footballs. They are not um, just almond shapes. There are angles to them, even though in a simplified manner, we might think that they are almonds or footballs. <laughs> so just wanted to bring that to your attention, including places around the cheekbones and the jawline uh, into the chin. We do have some nice angles going on there as well. So just be aware of that. Um, if you find that you need to be fixing some things after you've transferred, those are some things to take a look at. You'll notice that I, I've already started on the hair. I did a demo in class and um, this was at the very top of the head. Um, since you can see some of these areas, I'm going to point some things out about them. Let me get a pencil here. There we go. All right, so um, a couple of things. I've got the source right here next to it. The hair in general follows the contour form of the head that it's placed on. So what that means is the form and the light source that's hitting this head right here You'll notice that she's got an above front light source because we see the middle of her forehead, we can see her cheekbones and the nose. We've got some highlights going on there. So if I were to bring this up to the camera, hopefully there's a nice place where I can show you where you can see some of the, some of the highlights there. We've got some highlights. Everything about her hair is dark but you can tell there's just this slight change in value in here and right here. Now you'll notice that it's getting darker as the fold of the hair wraps at like the peak of the mountain, comes down into the valley. We've got a shadow right here, slight shadow right there as well on this right hand side. That shadow continues down here along her hairline, but then right here, we've got some nice highlights same with right here. Now I say highlight, what I mean to say, and I hope this carries over, um, the highlight is not something that's super light. You'll notice that these highlights in her hair are the lighter areas where the light is hitting this part because it's hitting this part of her head. It's all consistent, it's all cohesive. If the light's hitting here, the light's hitting here, light's hitting here, and then as parts of the face fall away from the viewer, we're seeing less of that lighter value, but since the local color and the local value of her hair in its entirety is dark, that's why we have darkness going on throughout, even though it's slightly lighter, but still dark right there. So that is what I have conveyed here. You'll see that in my drawing, did the exact same thing. I followed the darker areas right there. It becomes lighter right in there. And some of these other detail areas where I've got some variances of how the hair kind of folds in and out of each other, I will demonstrate. Same with these little wispy areas. So this is an area that I've already completed. I will continue going further down. So let's bring that up here. And what I'm gonna be using, um, I lost my 5B pencil. So I've got my, oh, that's wrong. I'm gonna use my 4B and my 6B. There we go. I'll show you my pencils here. So this is my 4B pencil, my Stettler 4B pencil. They look like this because I have sharpened it with, um, with an X-Acto knife. I'm hoping that the focus becomes clearer. I don't know why the video is not making it clear. Come on. 
Oh well, you guys can see that. I've sharpened it with an X-Acto knife, both of them. By the way, if any pencil gets to be this tiny, it's about time to get a new pencil. Um, I've used this 6B a lot. So what sharpening with an X-Acto knife does is it allows that tip of the graphite to become very broad and wide so that I can use uh, lots of it without having to use the tip and thereby causing possible trenches. So just be aware of that. <coughs> excuse me. So I'm going to come in here and <coughs> excuse me again. I know that the the value here is going to be very dark. So I'm going to go ahead and don't be afraid. Make it very dark. Go in the direction of the hair. Notice the contour. In this position, the hair is acting like the background of the face contour right here. So here we go, I'm laying in. Sorry if the camera's shaking. I'll try to do this demo as quickly as possible. Um, I don't plan on speeding this up so you guys can see me real time. Sped up videos are super helpful, but I also want you to be able to actually see the process in real time as I do it here. So I'm going to go down here and I'll continue going down into this area. We're starting to get into what I call the ugly junior high stage. Um, and it, it really doesn't look that bad, to be perfectly honest, um, because we're just laying in value to a shape. But if it starts to look ugly, that's okay. Just push through. For myself, almost every project goes through an ugly stage. I call it the ugly junior high stage because you just got to push through. You'll get, you'll get through it. You'll learn through it. Just got to gotta keep going. All right. So that's about what I'll, I'll get to right now at this, at this particular part. Um, you'll, excuse me, you'll notice that um, the hair that I have outlined in general, I've matched the solid shapes and angles. Um, I wasn't super detailed. When you have hair, don't get all caught up in the fact that your brain can see all of these wispies and all of these individual strands all at once. It might seem intimidating, but if you can squint and get the general shape down, notice how I've handled the right side of her hair. We have some wispies going on here. We've got the end right there. We've even got some value changes in here about the different strands. So as I look here, I'll bring this down a little bit. You'll notice that I just captured those general angles. It's one big mass shape. I value match just a little bit right there on the inside. And you'll notice that because I saw in the source that it's very soft and there are some nice wispy frays at the end of her hair right there, I've actually left that blank. I've just given myself some reminders of where the angle and shape is located right there, but I have not gone in and put in little triangles for that area. This here. Always have your kneaded eraser with you when you are gonna be doing hair. That guy's gonna come in real handy as I continue this. So continuing on with this shape, what I've done now is I've taken that big bulk shape that I've colored in, um, colored in, well, I just laid down in a value of the dark value that we've got going on here. So now I'm going to start molding it. Sometimes you just need clay down in order to mold it. So I'm looking at my source here and I'm noticing that we've got um, some light areas right in here and it gets dark and there are some strands of light. Certainly you can value map that. It's a good idea to value map, but remember that hair is very soft. All the edges within the hair are going to remain soft. So I'm gonna follow along with this. Just like glare where I'm looking at it. So I'm gonna actually take the source off to the side. And I know you can't see the source in the video exactly how I'm looking at it, but for sake of me following along to do this demo, I'm gonna just hold it off to the side. And I'm bringing in large swooping areas of dark value here. Careful of any sharp places in your sharpened pencil. Don't give yourself trenches. You wanna be able to make everything moldable now and in the future. If there's anything that 
you need to fix, you want to make sure that you are in a position that you can fix it. I'm now gonna actually switch to my 6B, this little guy here. I think that will help me a lot. But he's so tiny, so it's kind of hard. I'm not sure I like using my 6B with him this small. I think I'll stick with my 4B now that I've tried that. All right, so even though this is a framing element, I even did this up here a little bit, but you can go ahead and bleed the hair right into the face. You don't need to stay in the lines. Notice, I don't need to fear anything. I'm throwing in this blanket of value and I'm not losing anything. I'm not losing what it is I already have drawn. Don't go too hard. I'm using a light pressure with a soft pencil and I'm bleeding the hair right into the face and it's still working. This is now giving me a foundation to mold those values of the face later when I get to that part. Which, um, since I'm right-handed, I'm choosing to go from right to left. Um, you can certainly start with the face. The face is more important than the hair in general if you're considering that hierarchy. So if you wanted to do the face first, make sure that that is how you want it and then transition to the hair. Just make sure you have something under your hand, um, whether you're right-handed or left-handed, so that you don't smudge what you've just accomplished. Remember, I'm going in the direction of the hair. I'm making sure to lay down chunks of value. I don't want things to look stringy. And how you get things to not look stringy is you clump things together into big, massive shapes. If there's a glare in the video, I will take what I've done and I will move it for you so you can... See, this is let's see. Wow, glares are difficult sometimes. You can see it better in the drawing. <laughs> All right. Hair is fluid. Hair does not need to be so structurally sound like the facial features or anything that is structurally sound in the face. So anything that would be associated with the skull, the face, the bones and muscles, those need to be where they need to be. You need to be very accurate with those. You need to make sure those proportions and those angles and those shapes are correct. When it comes to the hair, make it accurate, but hair can change, hair is fluid. It does not need to be exactly like the source. Follow the source, of course. Make sure that you are copying it as exactly as possible, but with the little asterisk that if you are doing your best to match the angles and the alignments, this general shape is fine, even if it's not as accurate as the rest of the face. So I did wanna point that out, hair changes. If you have your piece hanging in a gallery and if someone is looking at it, chances are they're not seeing the source that you use to draw it, right? And if they notice that like one of your eyes is crooked, one of your eyes is in the forehead, maybe one of your nostrils is out of line with the other nostril, they're gonna notice that. But if you have some random hair strands out of place from the source picture, they're not gonna notice that, that's not important. As long as the hair is well done, the hair can be altered a little bit from the source if you need it to. down in here, making that edge a little bit harder. I'm varying up the pressure I'm putting on my pencil. I'm still going in the direction of the hair. I'm laying in this huge bulk of value, just as if I would if I were handling skin. And I'm going in the direction of the hair for that contour, but I'm not allowing this to look stringy. 
soft edges, varying up the weight that I'm putting with pressure upon my pencil. Continuing here. I'm almost done. We're getting now to the part soon of my favorite part with doing hair. And that is when we bring in the eraser. Okay, so I'm bringing that in here. All right, so we've got something now that is as dark as it needs to go. I'll bring this up. Can start to see some small variations in the lights and darks, but now I'm gonna take my eraser, I'm gonna pull some stuff out. And this is my favorite part about doing hair. So, this is what you would do as you're doing this. Notice, by the way, I've left this guy to be pretty light, but he's not actually like punched out like how this is. I'm gonna take my eraser, and matching that angle, it's not gonna look exactly the same. Now, if you value mapped this, maybe you would have totally avoided that area and that would have been a very solid punch through. But make sure it doesn't look like it's outlined or that it's a graphic shape. All the edges still need to be rather soft. And when you use your kneaded eraser like this, the edges will remain soft and that's what's great about it. And this is so fun. I love, the movie sounded like it was sarcastic. I actually mean it. <laughs> I love pulling out hair strands with the kneaded eraser. You'll notice that the kneaded eraser is pretty powerful. Um, I'm also using a fairly new one. So you might wanna get a new one um, or clean your old one. If this thing's like almost black from the semester of drawing, you can take this guy and just kind of knead it to clean it a little bit. But now we're starting to get something that looks kind of like a hole in the hair. It's still not quite how I want it. Um, I like how there's these nice little wispies around it. So when it comes to the wispies, um, I call them that. I don't know if anyone else calls them that, but these little strands of hair, um, again, they don't need to be measured out. They don't need to be um, precise, but they need to follow in general what's going on with the source. So with that, I'm going to take the kneaded eraser, and this is something that's pretty neat. From the kneaded eraser, take the background, which is white, like the white of, of the bristle board, and creep into, creep into the positive space of the hair. Let's see if I can. Need eraser as powerful as it is right here, because it's newish, it's been kind of cleaned. It's gonna do a job that's even more powerful than what I'd actually like. So I'll go back with my pencils, but I'm softening that edge right there and I'm gonna come back with, with my pencil. I'm gonna fix some of this by laying back in some strands, selective strands here. Again, going in the direction of the hair. Okay, and now on the outside, this is another fun part. A little goes a long way. Do not overdo this with the little edge work wispies. Keep them solid and dark as they emerge from the shape of the hair and then get lighter as they come away. That's what I was showing even up there. Do you see how it's slightly darker? It gets a little bit lighter. Notice that this is not exactly the same as what's happening here. That's okay, it still works. You know, as you see this, it's still working. The hair doesn't look stringy. It doesn't look like anything is dramatically off or wrong about it. It actually just looks like natural hair as gravity is enacted upon it, bringing it down. So we've got these areas here. I'm going to sharpen this edge just a little bit. Soften as it, we come back into the body of the hair so it doesn't look like an outline. And so this is starting to work really well. 
So now, this is the last part here, I'm gonna go into this area and I'm gonna pull out some, oops, there goes my navy eraser. I'm gonna pull out some areas. And again, this is probably gonna be a little bit of overkill because the eraser is gonna lighten it too much. It's gonna be the wrong value, but I'm gonna be softening some stuff. Whoop. Go in the direction of the hair and it's almost like you're drawing in some of these lighter areas with the navy eraser. So that's enough, that's good. Let me pick this up so you can see without the glare. So this is what's happening. You'll notice it's way too light. So I'm gonna come back in here with my pencil and I'm gonna fix that. Blend it in. Within the light areas, you can have some harder edges. Just go in the direction of the hair That whole general area is just a little bit too light, so I'm just gonna lay down some value. I'm not gonna lose anything. I'm gonna punch in some darks. And what makes hair look like hair in these areas is the texture I'm giving it. It's that, that texture of going back and forth with the nudity eraser and my pencil to pick out these strands. And once you get to this part of doing the hair, this is really where I feel like it is the most fun. Remember to match value. Remember that edges in the hair are going to remain soft unless you selectively make them hard in certain places to show forth certain strands, usually in the mid-tone lighter areas. down a little bit. Hardening this edge. So that this doesn't look like an outline, I'm going to bring that hard edge and bring it back out into the hair to mold that back out into the hair. There we go. Now we're starting to get something that looks like hair.